Hello to all my truth seekers. Welcome to the truth show. In this video, I'll explain the process of soul sacrifice and forging a bargain with the devil. I am sure I have produced a video about this in the past. Okay, here's another. But this time is different since I am spiritually mature and well educated in various subjects. I realized that what we believe is not necessarily genuine. There are so many unresolved questions. For example, can someone who sacrifices another person be reincarnated? What about the individuals being sacrificed? Rest assured, I will address these questions and provide the answers you seek. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. To truly understand the art of sacrifice, we must embark on a journey back in time to an era when sacrificing was not just a norm, but a way of life. Many of us misconstrued these sacrifices as rituals, but the truth is far more interesting. You see, human sacrifice is a ritual practice that dates back to prehistoric times and has been observed in various cultures across the world. It typically involved the killing of one or more humans as part of a ritual, often intended to please or appease God, spirits, or deceased ancestors. The practice of human sacrifice has not remained stagnant. Evidence suggests that it was prevalent in various cultures during the Bronze Age. However, with the advent of Iron Age and the evolution of religious beliefs, human sacrifice began to wane in Africa, Europe, and Asia. Its practice continued, albeit to varying degrees, in the Americas until the arrival of European colonizers. Many societies, mythology, and religious literature includes references to human sacrifice. Some interpret the story of Abraham and Isaac in the Hebrew Bible as an ethological myth including the eradication of human sacrifice. Human sacrifices were discovered in ancient Egypt near the graves of early pharaohs at Abydus. The Aztecs and Nawa peoples believed that the sun needed human food. Therefore, they sacrificed thousands of victims in the early May ceremony. Oh, yes. Then there's... Today, human sacrifice is extremely rare and is treated as murder under modern secular laws. Most major religions condemn the practice and it is looked down upon as barbaric. But that doesn't stop many from doing it. Before I break down the differences, guidelines, rules, etc., let's explore the history of selling your soul to the devil. Selling one's soul to the devil is a cultural motif that has been prevalent in various legends and literature. It is often depicted as a pact or bargain made with the devil in exchange for knowledge, power, or other worldly desires. Here are some sources that provide information on the history of selling your soul to the devil. Wikipedia says that the story of Faust and the character of Mephistopheles both show how important it is to make a deal with the devil, which is also called a pact with the devil or a Faustian agreement. This idea is at the heart of many Christian beliefs. Britannica talks about the story of Faust, a German astrologer or sorcerer who gives the devil his soul in exchange for power and knowledge. The story of Faust has been told and interpreted in many different ways throughout Western writing and folklore. Here goes. You see, Faust was a brilliant scholar who was dissatisfied with his life. He wanted to know everything and experience everything. One day, he summoned the devil who offered him a deal. He would give Faust unlimited power and pleasure for a specific time. But after that, he would take his soul to hell. Faust agreed, thinking he could outsmart the devil. With the devil's help and the gin slash demon sidekick, Mephistopheles, who gave him the power and talent to do many things, Faust traveled the world, performed miracles, and seduced women. He met a young and innocent girl named Gretchen, who fell in love with him. He also met Helen of Troy, the most, well, one of the most beautiful women in history, who became his lover. 
He enjoyed his life, but he also felt guilty and restless. He realized he had caused a lot of suffering and destruction to others, especially to Gretchen, who was abandoned, pregnant, and accused of killing her baby. As the time of his contract approached, Foss became more desperate and fearful. He tried to repent and escape the devil, but it was too late. The devil came to claim his soul and drag him to hell. Foss's last words were, Oh, stay a while. Thou art so fair. He was referring to Helen, but he could have also meant his life, which he had wasted and lost. What can we learn from the story of Foss? Well, with the help of the devil and his jinn slash demon companion, Mephistopheles, he gained the power from and talents to execute various tasks and gifts. Foss flaunted himself and slept with numerous women with the assistance of his psyche. It did not matter whose heart he broke. He was only concerned about himself. He was very arrogant. So when his contract expired, he had nothing left to offer, not even a sacrifice, because he exploited all of his contact slash connections. As a result, he was unable to make her sacrifice. The devil's gin slash demon bestowed upon him all of his talents, so he didn't have any. His only option was to turn himself over to the devil slash gins or demons. Using false story as an example, I could go to great lengths about selling your soul to the devil and everything that comes with it. For example, upon selling your soul to the devil, different deals and outcomes depend on the person making a deal. Contract lengths are typically five years. The term sacrifice might be misinterpreted. The word sacrifice refers to giving up something precious to your heart, or it would not be a sacrifice. It will be an offering of some sort. And these are not with humans. They include animals, food, jewelry, etc. So there are sacrifices, i.e. close family, friends, etc. Then there are offerings typically done with animals, food, jewelry, etc. Get it? Great. A person with abilities and gifts is more likely to have a successful transaction and renew the deal with the devil depending on what they perform throughout the contract term and whether they remain lucrative. In most cases, they wouldn't need to make her sacrifices because they already have talents. A person liking abilities in their contract is made with extreme caution and thought, which boils down to sometimes their appearance as a bargaining chip. A stunningly attractive individual could use their appearance to entice and persuade numerous of people into doing a variety of things, of course, with the help of their psychic slash jinn slash demon to help them. However, appearances fade and they would have to make either a human sacrifice or if they employed the conditions of their contract to become an ally rather than a liability, an extension is accepted without a sacrifice, you see. Okay, Jennifer isn't exactly like Foss because she's a naturally talented dancer and actress. She is also stunningly attractive. So if she made a contract slash deal with the devil, she wouldn't need any gins or demons to bestow her gifts. She only needed an extra dosage of infatuation and lust to con large numbers of people. Well, initially, she didn't. I'm not sure if she sold her soul since then. So, anyway. To keep the contract, she must demonstrate that she is a valuable ally rather than a problem. In my opinion, Jennifer still has extensions left. She's leveraged the terms of her contracts to establish a name for herself. Her star quality may improve because she's Leo, the opposite of Aquarius and of Aquarian age, depending on the Aquarian audit. She may be in our sight, yet Aquarius is, is regarded as the age of truth as well. If Jennifer's star was built on lies, deception, corruption, and more, it wouldn't matter what sign she was or what deal she struck with the devil. Her star would fall. I hope she does not commit a human sacrifice. But given her age, they would not accept it. They would replace her with someone younger, more talented, and with fewer skeletons in their closet. I guess we'll see. Quick note. 
And yes, the devil does have handlers to scout for them, such as record executives and members of the elite whom he controls. It seems Drake is a man of many talents. If Drake made a deal with the devil, his terms would have been the same as those of Jennifer Lopez. However, Jennifer had more to bring with the agreement. She didn't need a gen slash demon to accompany or help her. These gen slash demons are typically named by the artists who have them. They sometimes call them their alter egos. Quick note, don't be mistaken with people like me who claim to have alter personalities slash egos in order to distance themselves from negative behavior such as being honest, fearless, and irresponsible. These people, including myself, just removed ourselves from the awful behavior so that we would not have to bear the burden for these out of character actions. Genuine gen slash demons or alter egos are more extreme and utterly out of character with a person's genuine personality. They even behave and sound differently. Oh yes. In Drake's case, having a sidekick would have given him exceptional powers and more. But as I previously stated, if he has skeletons in his claws in this new age of Aquarius, it may not matter what he offers. His empire will crumble. That is unless they recognize increased profitability based on his age and appearance. I mean, he is fine. If not, he'll have to make a human sacrifice. What happens to the person's soul that you sacrifice? Well, depending on a person and whether you have a gen slash demon companion, the individual soul enters the gen slash demon to keep it energized for your advantage, particularly if this person is more talented than you are. Then your sidekick could use that person's ability to assist you. Reminder, the contracts typically last five years. Quick note, there's a difference between selling your soul and making a deal with the devil. One requires a soul to give because they have nothing else to offer, so they need the help of a gen slash demon that requires the soul. A deal with the devil doesn't require a soul sacrifice, just a blood oath slash signature. Now back to Drake. So if Drake sacrificed Triple X Tentacion in 2018, his five year deal would have expired. He would have to make a sacrifice or sit back and watch his empire slash starlight crumble. That is, unless the devil still considers him an ally. I guess we'll see. Quick note, you cannot sacrifice a witch or someone with a strong spiritual connection, such as a practicing witch, like many are on YouTube and whoever is doing tarot readings or whatever. Some of them are just practicing witches and just really great educated and academically involved in knowledge of tarot readings. It does, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have gifts. I would call them practicing witch or practicing tarot readers. Yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, you can only cast hexes, which is hazardous. Let me say that again. Okay. You cannot sacrifice a witch. That's a natural witch, genetic witches, or someone with a strong spiritual connection, such as a practicing witch. You could only cast hexes. That's H-E-X-E-S, which is hazardous. Because natural and experienced witches would know about the curse slash hex and they may cast a binding spell on you, meaning they bind you from doing harm to them. Oh yes. Quick note. If you can't sacrifice someone who is in the midst of spiritual development but still has previous karma, you could reap the karma of the person you sacrifice. This is why sick celebrities and individuals like to sacrifice innocent babies or children. However, they are rarely welcome since they are too young and gin slash demons require something to work with, while babies are still growing. As a result, newborns are frequently utilized as soul sacrifices in order to reincarnate another soul. Pop question. Can a sacrificed soul be reincarnated? No, because the soul has been corrupted, used and possessed by gin slash demons. Pop question. What is the difference between a soul and a spirit? You see, the soul holds, pay attention, <laughs> the part of us that connects with our fellow human beings while the spirit is the part that connects to our creator. The soul is often considered a person's immortal essence while the spirit is the animating force that gives life to a person. The soul is the source of emotions, thoughts, and personal identity, while the spirit is a source of faith, trust, and worship. In simple terms, the soul consists of our talents, gifts, personalities, memories, and so on. It's kind of like a memory card. 
The spirit is our life force or the battery that keeps us alive. When we die and, and aren't able to be reborn slash reincarnated, we pass it on to our creators. Now back to celebrity sacrifices. Jennifer Hudson. Hudson is said to have allegedly sacrificed her mother, sister, and nephew for fame and wealth. And boy, did she ever get it. But that would imply Hudson had no talents to trade with or perhaps her talents were insufficient. I argue that her skills were insufficient since she had to make a human sacrifice. She needed a gen slash demon to assist her. Well, the Hudson family died in 2008 after 16 years and five years per person per sacrifice, meaning she may be do another sacrifice unless she used the terms of her contract to become an ally, in which case she may not require human sacrifice or the assistance of a gen slash demon. I suppose we'll see. But if she doesn't need another sacrifice because she's made a reputation for herself and the gen slash demon who was assisting her with her abilities has vanished, that means she'll have to work even harder to be relevant because her talents would no longer be her route to further fame and money. Meaning that people would not be instantly enamored with her voice anymore. Whether they, well some of them anyway, will find it bothersome and annoying. I guess we'll see. Quick note, remember the devil is immortal and does not need a soul? Only his demon slash gens do. The devil merely makes deals. Pop question, how to detect a soulless person? Well, they dislike being looked at in the eyes. They like genuine empathy and compassion. It's all an act. They like genuine originality, self-motivation, aspiration. They need the assistance of others. They lack genuine joy and happiness. It's all an act. They're never satisfied, always need and want more. They care about money or whatever the terms of their agreement were. Nothing else matters. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications for when I do post my videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.